All right, well, hey, we're going to get started, guys. Welcome to High School Group. It is Wednesday. Yeah, that, that's, that works. That works. Well, hey, if it's your first time, we are so glad that you are here. We have a fun night planned for you, night of worship. We have a panel discussion tonight, which is going to be a good time. You guys love panels. We love panels. And then you guys are going to break up into small groups. It's going to be a really, really great time. Uh, we have one announcement. That announcement is consistent each and every week, and that announcement is that we have church here on the weekends. We have three services that we offer, one on Saturday nights at 5 p.m., and two on Sundays at 9 a.m., and 1045. Do not miss it. We would love for you guys to come and be a part of our church. Come and sit and listen to the messages. Uh, We would love to see you there. Before we get into worship, we have our good friend Taylor Burnett. Taylor, come on up with your sunglasses and all, and he's going to give the exhortation for tonight. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to share a little passage from Hebrews. It's Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And it says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is, a, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Community is so important. And I think we take advantage of what, uh, of what Wednesday nights can be uh, and how important like, uh, like it is for us to meet together. Like, for you kids, like if you guys are going through stuff, ask, your leader, ask like your leader to get coffee or be like, hey, leader, why don't you ask me to get coffee? Meet with them. We're here for you guys to walk to life with you guys. So take advantage of what these Wednesday nights can do. Especially like you seniors, like you guys don't have much time left, like in this youth group. It's sad, but take advantage of that and use your influence to show how important community is. We are meant to walk through life together and do life with one another. So take advantage of these Wednesday nights, meet with your leader. You can't get help if you don't ask for it. And we're all here, we're all broken. We, we're all a mess. So talk to us and be like, hey, buy me coffee. And then we'll buy you coffee. Each one of your leaders will. So just, like, just realize how important like, community is. Uh, and how big these Wednesday nights like, can be to be together and to just push each other to know God and to be our best selves. So I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna go into worship. And as you like worship, like I know some of us like to goof off, but let's just like take our own space and think about like the words we're actually saying. Um, Cause it's a time like, to worship God and we usually disrespect that time by like goofing off. But, like it's a serious time. So think about what words you're actually saying and what those mean and to this time for it to be between you and our Lord. So God, thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you for this space. Thank you for this team who puts these nights on. I just pray that you have your hand over tonight and you uh, have your hand over each member of the panel, Josh, Josh, McKenna, and Jenny. Um, and pray over this worship crew that you just move through them uh, and that your Holy Spirit will fill this room. And I pray for everyone in this room that we can take these Wednesday nights seriously and uh, just really appreciate what these nights can be and take advantage of them. So God, thank you for loving us uh, and thank you for always showing us grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can stand and come to the front. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. The God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord there's power in the mighty 
name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends I know how this story ends Oh, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good The enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord The enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good And you turn it for When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light, the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you When I am sure 
Holy Spirit, I just thank you for tonight, Lord. I pray that you would come down and dwell on us tonight, Lord. And that when we may seek a, a question, Lord, that we would go and seek you and seek your word and not what the world has to say, Lord. So I just pray over this panel tonight that we would ask creative and helpful questions, Lord, about uh, the season of singleness and it not being a struggle, but it's just a season of life and, and friendships and how important those are, Lord, because you created them. So Lord, I just pray that you would, you would bless this night and you'd bless all of us. And in your name we pray, amen. Test, test, test. We good? I think we are all good. Oh my gosh, you're so close to you. I know we are. There's no real way to... Uh... I mean, I, I like them, so it's fine. Yeah, they're, they're not bad. Usually Brandon smells fine. He uses cologne or something. Huh. Well, good evening. How are you guys doing? Great. Your guys' enthusiasm might be at an all-time low. Tell me, how is your day? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Well, hey, raise your hand if you know why there's four of us up here today. Panel! Panel! We are having a panel discussion today starting our series on love, sex, and Dating. You guys are getting with the program. We are launching a seven-week series. A seven-week seven series. Jeez. We're, we're going to be covering a lot of different things, lots of different stuff. But tonight, we need to get going because we have, like, panels fly by. We're talking about singleness and friendships. Right, Jenny? Singleness and friendships tonight? That's what we're talking about. I love it. Well, Jenny, what's the first question that we have on the docket? The first question on the docket is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this question of Mr. Bressel. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Josh Bressel, what is the point of friendships? I know, I need this. I'm like, what are you doing? All right. Well, when I think about friendship and when I think about friendship in the context of the Bible, it really comes down to community right? What we are doing right here is we are gathering together in community and being in Christian community, joining together as Christians to learn and to grow, to be more like Jesus. So when I think about friendships, I think about that exact thing, right? I think about how as friends, we should be building each other up and encouraging each other towards our relationship with Christ. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. As Christians and as friends, we are called to build each other up and encourage one another to follow Jesus and to love Jesus more. I think that's a really big part of what it means to be a friend. Yeah, I like that. Along with that, as friends, right? We're supposed to see and identify some of the characteristics or some of the qualities of God in our friends. I mean, if you look at uh, when, when man was created in Genesis 1, uh, he says that male and female, he created them. So God created male and female in his image. Both men and women are equally made in the image of God. And so that means that we are image bearers. We bear the image of God for the rest of the world to see. And so when, you're, when you have friends, normally you're drawn to people where they're 
characteristics or their qualities are appealing to you because their character, their characteristics and qualities that you see through they, that are God's characteristics and qualities that you see demonstrated through them, and they're attractive and they're and they're fun and they're encouraging. And so, as friends, we appreciate those. We honor our differences. We honor the specific characteristics and qualities that we as image bearers bear. Yeah, that's good. That's true. Thank you. That's all true. Yeah. Um, I think another uh, point of friendship is, um, you know, God made us for a relationship. And so when you think about uh, the Bible, there's a ton of one another verses. Um, All of these things that talk about how we're supposed to treat each other and love one another and bear with one another and uh, suffer with one another. I mean, tons and tons of things, but it's, God didn't give us all of those things just as commandments is like what we're supposed to do, but he gave us those things because he knows what we need. He knows what we need from one another. And so a huge part of friendship is to be able to do all of those things for one another and even, and then reflect God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and their relationship. And so, I mean, friendships is is just good. It's just way better than not having friends. Yeah. I mean, you know what that's like, right? Having no friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's way better. It's way better to have friends. And like, that is God's intention for us. Um, So the second question I have, McKenna. This is McKenna, in case none of you guys know her. This is Josh Brink's girlfriend right here. Uh, Oh, yeah. Second question is, is uh, is it good to have opposite sex friendships, and what does that look like? Yeah, so short answer for the first part that I'll kind of touch on in a second is yes, but that comes with some other parts to it. Um, what does that look like? So in college, um, Josh has talked before, I don't know if you guys have heard him talk about this community that we've built in college together of friends. Um, and it was both his guy friends and my girlfriends all together. Um, and I built some really strong connections with some of the guys in that group, um, that were like really respectful and like very supportive of just like where I was at and where I was at with Christ and wanted to like walk with me in that. Um, So I think with these friendships, they're supposed to build your character, supposed to walk alongside of you with that. Um, Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So basically this is saying that we're supposed to walk alongside each other. So these friendships and these relationships, we're supposed to challenge and push each other and also encourage one another together to grow on our path with Christ, you know? Um, and they, these relationships, these other people, whether it's male or female, they need to be willing to say the hard things. Like, it's going to suck. <laughs> and it, it can, it's going to hurt. But um, these are people that you trust and that are wanting to walk alongside of you in this and that they're being so honest with you because they care about you. Um, Proverbs 27, six says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Basically, this is saying again, like true friends are willing to be honest with you in a loving way, though it's gonna hurt. And this even could create conflict, but it's healthy conflict. And this is something you're gonna grow from eventually. Um, And again, like relationships, within these relationships, Most importantly, you want them to like walk with you in Christ. Um, With this group of friends that we had in college, um, we had a giant group text. There was probably like, what, 12 of us in it? Um, And obviously we would talk about like, where are we gonna get lunch? Or where are we studying? Or, you know, like, where are we hanging out? Um, But we would also um, send prayer requests to each other. And this was just so special for us and like, for me specifically, just that it was a community that we had built of friends, um, both male and female, that we trusted enough and that it was like a safe space of prayer warriors to like walk alongside of this. So just like that was like really awesome to have like in these relationships with other people. Yeah, so when we talk about having friends of the opposite sex, right? That is good and that is good to have, right? I have a lot of close friends who are girls. We hang out and we hang out and we are real and we're honest with each other. We're open about what's happening in our lives. We're open to a certain extent about our relationship with God and we have community, right? 
as we established earlier, right? Like we're supposed to have Christian fellowship and Christian community. And the church is not just made up of men with men. And it's not just women. It's men and women, right? Boys and girls, guys and girls, right? We're all together in community. And you can have relationships and friendships with members of the opposite sex that are good and that are honoring to God, right? Yeah, Yeah, that's that's good, man. I like that. Um, Yeah, is it good to have opposite sex friendships? Yes, it's very good. Uh, There's boundaries though, right? That come alongside with that. Like with uh, regards to like McKenna's and my friend group from college, uh, there's a lot of girls in that friend group that I love. I really care for it. They're my sisters in Christ. I love them. I also have uh, a bunch of friends that are girls here that I love and I care for. Uh, but there's things that I'm not going to talk to them about that I would talk to about like to some of my best guy friends. So for example, I'm not going to talk to one of my close girlfriends about my purity. That's something I'm going to guard for myself and guard for those close friends around me who are holding me accountable, keeping me uh, pure in my relationship with McKenna and also with my relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, There's also just like, if if McKenna and I are having issues, I'm not going to go and talk to one of my other friends that's a girl about it, right? I mean, that's something that's going to stay between McKenna and I, and we're going to work through uh, but I'm not going to go and spill the beans to, to other girls because that makes, that makes me emotionally vulnerable to them and could lead for confusing feelings down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all experienced this when you're friends with opposite sex and then all of a sudden you're all good and then somebody catches feelings, right? And we've all seen the friend zone memes. There's a lot of those. <laughs> Too many. There's so many. Yeah. There's some funny ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, But I think that there's one thing that as you're in friendship, you kind of have to guard your heart a bit. And so kind of the same things that they're saying, it's paying attention to when you're friends with them. If you kind of start to find yourself in a place where you're starting to catch feelings for someone and that's not really where you want to go, it's not a relationship you want to have, then, you know, a a really smart thing is to kind of just like pull back from that. And one way you can kind of safeguard yourself is uh, if you're, if you are in groups where it's not just one-on-one or, you know, you can like, keep, you know, hanging out and that's just going to grow. Um, but also you just want to be respectful of one another. If you, if you know, like someone of the opposite sex has a crush on you, right? They like you, you've heard about it from everybody. Um, what's really hard that I see a lot, especially in um, high school students is, uh, people don't know what to do with that. It gets really awkward and uncomfortable. And so then they just decide to be mean. Like, I don't, I don't really know what that's about, but especially with believers, like that's not what we're supposed to be doing. And so there's a way to be kind and, you know, and honest and even just like, you know, hey, like I, I know this, I've heard this, whatever, you know, I understand you like me. I'm sorry, I'm going to politely friend zone you and how you can say that, however you want to say that. Um, but then to still be kind and not to uh, take shots at them or make it awkward or tell all your friends, oh, she likes me, oh my gosh, da, da, da. she's following me everywhere. Or like, oh my gosh, this guy won't stop hitting me up. He's like, no, he's like, you're beautiful. I'm like, I don't care, like, leave me alone, right? It's like all these things, like we know all of these things, like he's DMing me, right, all the things. So it's like, just to be mindful, it's like you want to be friends, but you also need to pay attention and honor one another in case feelings start to come up. And so having boundaries and you know having your other friends have insight into those things are helpful to kind of hold you accountable. Hey, you're being a little too flirty. You need to roll back, right? Or just different things like that. And all of that is gonna make for just a better time of just, um, just God honoring friendship uh, with one another. Um, so Bressel, this question is for you. I mean, it's just for him. It right? is for him. for him, yeah. Russell, is singleness like the worst thing in life? (laughs) As the sole single person up here on this panel, I will say singleness is not the worst thing in life. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Singleness gets a bad rap, right? Everyone's like, oh, you're single. Oh, you must be so sad. Well, besides the crime that I do at night, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't do that. But sometimes. Sometimes. About unrelated things. <laughs> Anyways, back to the topic. I know. I know. I got it. I got it. All right. But 
in all honesty, in all truthfulness, singleness is definitely not the worst thing in life. There are so many benefits and so many things that singleness allows that you just don't have the opportunity for in a relationship. One of those things that I am so grateful for is my ability to serve and to work in the church, to work a full-time job and then still come to church things like this, to spend my evenings serving God and serving young people, right? I am so grateful for where God has placed me in my life that I have the time and the ability to pour back into God's church, right? Singleness is a blessing and we're gonna talk more about that later. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even if we wanna look at what the Bible says about singleness, I mean, it's all throughout scripture, but you can look specifically at 1 Corinthians 7 and Paul, he's, he's writing this letter uh, to the church in Corinth and he's actually spends, spends a few verses talking about singleness. He says in verse 32, I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. His interests are divided. In the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can, ne- can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit. But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. I am saying this for your benefit not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. So in this passage, Paul is saying, there, there, yeah, there's, there are benefits, clear benefits to being single. I mean, if you look at Paul and his ministry, what he was able to do, he was able to, to start the early church. And he, and he attributes that largely to his singleness. Like, he wouldn't have been, it would have been very difficult. I'm not gonna say he wouldn't have been able to because he, he might've been able to find a way, but it would have been very difficult for him to go all over and plant church after church in city after city if he had to care for, his, care for his wife. Now I'm not saying that a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife is a burden. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's a good thing. But there's also... <laughs> That <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's like also really good benefits. Like Josh was saying, he has the ability to pour in and invest in his relationship with Christ in ways that he wouldn't be able to if he was, if he was dating somebody or if he was in a relationship. And that kind of leads us into our next question. Uh, it starts with McKenna, actually. What are some pros and temptations about singleness? Yeah, so kind of bouncing back to it other Josh was saying, like, (laughs) other Josh, yeah, Um, that it's a season that the Lord is blessing you with, with time and energy that you don't get when you're in a relationship. Um, You get to pursue the Lord with no distractions. Like, how awesome is that? Like, that's so cool for you just to be like, I'm getting to work on myself. I get to work on my relationship with Christ and like I'm going full force on it. Um, Like for me right now, like I have a full-time job, like I'm committing to leading now. Um, I come on Sundays, I'm in a Bible study and I have to hang out with this guy. Um, (laughs) And so it just doesn't allow for a lot of extra time. Like we always say, like we're always busy, but like those of you that are single and the season of singleness for anyone, like it's just, like such a time for you to be able to like focus all of your energy on like pursuing the Lord. Um, And it's also a time that you get to pursue yourself. Like, what do you like doing? Like, what do you want to change? Like, how can you like grow yourself? Um, When I was in college, I was trying to figure out, you know, like I went into college single. And so I had about like two to three years of being single before Josh and I like started dating. Um, and it was like the best season of my life. So I'm, I- She just said, <laughs> it was the best season of her life before I met Josh. <laughs> no, that's recorded. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, that was good. Um, 
<laughs> so when I was in college and single during those years, I got to like really work on myself. So I really got to invest in these internships I, I wanted to start pursuing, these jobs that I enjoyed doing, um, the friendships that I wanted to pursue and build and grow, um, which have ultimately like led to Josh and I meeting and us like furthering and like b building the foundation that like our relationship was built on. Yeah, one thing that McKenna just said that I really just want to reiterate, right? When you're single, you have time for friendship. You have time to build relationship with your friends in a way that you don't have the ability to all the time when you are in a relationship. You can be open and honest and talk about God with your friends and be intentional about that time and help and support your friends in a way that you couldn't do if you were in a relationship. Yep. So those are a lot of the uh, pros of singleness. I would say uh, there's a lot of temptations. I think you guys know what a lot of the temptations are. Um, there's a temptation to flirt to get attention from other people because you know you're flirting and you know you want to see if you know, do they think I'm cool, right? And so you, there's, there's that temptation to just be really flirty. Uh, there's a temptation to settle where if you're single and, uh, you know, maybe like all of your friends get someone that they're dating and you're kind of on your own and you just kind of get to this place where you, oh, I just really want to date someone. I just really want to date someone. And then all of a sudden you're just kind of willing to settle for someone who's just kind of like, okay or fine, but really isn't God's best, right? That's a huge temptation. Um, another temptation is, well, do you want to explain homie hopping? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to explain. It feels homie weird. Hopping. I'm saying homie it out hopping, loud. right? Yeah. I mean, raise your hand if you know what homie hopper is. Yeah. So, like, now normally homie hopping is used when you go from pursuing a relationship with one friend and you move to the next friend. But this is more generalized how we're going to explain it. Like, in this sense, what we're saying is like, when you're single, right? I mean, through flirting, through like even settling you can get into these relationships and you're like, ah, I don't want this. And you're out. And then like two weeks later, a week later, you're like, you're hot. And you get into that one and you just move and you jump and you never actually enjoy the season of singleness that God is, place, is trying to place you in. You're never, never able to actually experience God's best for you if you're, if you're impatient. I mean, the amount of heartbreak and pain that I could stop and prevent from pursuing girl after girl while I was in high school would be like, I wish, I wish. I, I do too. Yeah. But like, for you, that's hindsight, right? Hindsight's yeah. 2020. <laughs> but like, you don't want to be caught in the situation where you're just moving on from the next to the next to the next, trying to search out, okay, who, who, who am I supposed to be with? Who is, God, who is God's husband for me? Who is God's wife for me? Like, maybe God just has you in a, sing, in a season of singleness so that you can focus on Him and you can point your eyes and your heart towards him. Have you asked that question? I think that's a very valid question. And just like learn what it means to be content in your relationship with Christ before you learn what it means to be content in your relationship with your significant other. Yeah, and that's so big. And we're gonna get into a lot more of that when we get into dating and stuff next week. But there are a ton of temptations when it comes um, to singleness. I was even thinking like, so I heard this, these terms, this uh, pick me girl and pick me boy. Mm. Explain. So I went ahead and wrote down the definition. Pick me girl, a woman who claims or acts as if she is unlike most other women. I'm not like them. I'm She's not. She's a unicorn. I'm not anything like them. I'm just so like you. I'm just so like you boys, right? Because I'm trying to get attention from them. Evidently, that's a pick me girl. Interesting. Pick me boy is a little bit different. A pick-me boy is a guy who uses self-deprecation in a manipulative way so a girl will give him attention or oppose what they said about themselves. So like when Bressel says, oh, like, nobody likes me. I wear so glasses. That would be like a pick-me thing. And then I would go, and then I'd be like manipulated into going, no, everyone likes you, mostly. Thank you, I needed to hear that. We do, we really like you, okay? So these are even temptations that we can, and we, you guys all know, okay? You might not admit that you've done it. You probably have, but you definitely could point out like 12 people, right, that you saw do this today. So this is like another thing of temptation. And again, all of that is coming back from this place of like you not knowing where your identity is. 
when you're single, it is such a great time to really invest in where your identity is, where you get your strength from, where you get your confidence from, who you trust. And all of those things as image bearers, all of that is about the Lord, all of that is in God. And when you know those things, then none of this stuff is a temptation to you, right? If I know that God's best is coming for me, then I'm not gonna be tempted to flirt or settle. If I know that I'm secure in who God made me be because I'm confident that like he has a plan and I have girlfriends who encourage me and build me up, then I'm not gonna be insecure enough to be like, pick me. Annoying, right? Pick me, girl. Pick me, pick me, girl, right? <laughs> I don't wanna be like that. So there's all these things that really come back to identity and really searching out and just knowing who you are in the Lord. And that is such a huge thing for singleness. Uh, a long time ago, I'm not gonna throw his name under the bus, but um, there was a young man who, when he was in high school, was, came and we were learning about Ruth and Boaz. And he was saying to me, um, oh, I can't wait to find my Ruth. And I was like, well, you better make sure that you're like Boaz first. like. And so this is a time in that singleness where whether God decides to give you a spouse or not, or whether he decides to have you single and has other intentions for you, we're gonna go crush the world, okay? Whatever it is, knowing that all of this time is preparing time and just seeking God and whatever he has for you and to grow in that right now. Okay, these are the good ones I've been waiting all night. So we're gonna kind of do them quick because we're a little bit over, okay? So this is for um, you two. Mm-hmm. Because you are, have been dating now for a couple of years, but you were uh, just friends for quite some time. Mm -hmm. It's a good model. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so first question, things you did well in friendship with one another before you were dating. Do you want to go first? You go. Okay. Um, <laughs> things we did well. I think one thing uh, is we were able to just have like simple fun. Like we were able to make anything enjoyable. Uh, so like whether we were with friends, whether we were eating a meal, whether we were focusing on homework, like we were just able to enjoy one another's company um, and just have fun with one another. Another thing I think that we really did well uh, was respecting one another's time. Uh, I had like we recollecting, recollecting back on college, uh, I had a group of like seven dudes that they're all some, some of the closest friends in my life. Uh, and there would be times where we would all want to hang out, but there was things that like just the guys wanted to do. And McKenna and her friends, they would respect that. And they would let us be by ourselves. Like there's this event uh, at CBU, that's where we went, uh, called Yule. And the, you go to this place and you get a meal and you watch a show, like there's a magician or you're at like this royal night thing where they're stabbing each other on horses. Um, but my friends and I- It was in college? It was in was college. It in middle school? Okay, no, I was just in checking. college, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what you get when you go to a private university. Um, but anyways, we were, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Private universities are great. I love CBU. Anyways, um, while like this event was big and it was huge, but my friends and I, we were like, we want to do something more fun. So we decided to have mule, manual. And so the seven of us would just like plan this whole event just for us seven. And the girls, they wanted to go to you with us. They wanted to hang out with us. They want to have fun. But we just kind of, but we Okay, so it was this event that you, the guys took the girls and it was like really cool and you dress up and you feel all fancy and the boys are like, let's go eat steak and watch football. And we're like, we're all supposed to go together. And he's like bailing because he's like, we're cooking steak. <laughs> it was mule, but they still respected it. And then like there'd be times where the girls would want to hang out and we'd be like, I feel like you got to stop talking. I feel like that was a bad example of what you were glad you did. I feel like kind of. I feel like if it was Drew or Lucy and there were boys and they wanted to go, you would have Probably said something more. different. Okay, let's go on. Things you would do. Do you have good things? Let's go on. Things you would do differently. <laughs> things you would do differently in your friendship. Uh, yeah. You can answer the last one if you want to, McKenna. The things we would do differently? Or, this, or the things that you like doing. I didn't know if you had you something. Do, do differently? Um, <laughs> so something that I really valued when we were friends was, um, Josh and I being really intentional with each other. Um, w like we would check in each on each other all the time. Like, how are you doing? How are you really doing? Like, how is your walk with Christ? But like, like we were saying earlier, like in a really respectful way, like we didn't cross any boundaries when we were doing that. It was out of like 
brotherly and sisterly love for each other, mm -hmm. um, where we were just like, we want to help each other grow. And so um, we were both very intentional with the time that we did get together. Um, and so that was something that I like really valued. Okay, things you would do differently? Please say Yule Ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mule, Yule. That, that was the answer you're looking for. Um, another thing I would do differently. Uh, so if you ever have the time, want to hear McKenna's my story, I would, I'm totally fine telling you. Um, but uh, the, the quick of it is I wasn't sure where my feelings at before, where my feelings were at before I started pursuing her. And so I opened up to her and I told her, like after she told me that she was into me, I had to like be like, oh, am I into you? And like it was this back and forth thing uh, where I really hurt McKenna. And it brought a lot of damage and a lot of pain, not only to our relationship, but also to our friendship. Uh, to the point where after this like on and off time for probably about eight months, don't take, don't, don't follow that example, dudes. Do not follow that example. Uh, where like I came back and I wanted a friendship. Uh, I wanted to like go back to normal, but also kind of like avoid an awkward conversation with McKenna. Um, and I realized like that wasn't possible. And so like I had hurt and, and really done a lot of damage in our friendship, uh, which thankfully we were able to repair but it wasn't through, it wasn't without the grace of God that we were able to repair it. Uh, there was another time when uh, like, I was so focused on trying to just like be there for McKenna in a time that she was really struggling. And we were just sitting and chatting and she's like sharing what's going on in her life. And like completely oblivious me, I like grabbed her hand. I was like, I'm really sorry. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm caring for a friend right now. Like, I'm so sorry this is going. But did you like, do this? No. No, no, it was, come on, <laughs> you know that's serious. When you interlock fingers. <laughs> but, but it was like, but for her, that could have easily sent her like vibes like, oh my gosh, are you into me? Are you not? And so it could have led to a lot of confusion. And I really, like, like I, I, if, I, if I were to do it differently, I wouldn't have done that. that good. Anything <laughs> that you do you have anything that you would do differently, McKenna? Um, just like touching on that, there was some conversations during that initial time when we were really trying to figure out if a relationship was something we were going to pursue after this like really strong friendship we built, like were we willing to risk it and all that stuff. Um, we put a lot of pressure on how other people were going to view our relationship, um, so much so that like a season of time we like literally just like went back and forth and we were like, how will our friends like what will our friends think, which is important, but almost to the fact that we're both nines on the Enneagram, which means we don't like making decisions, and we also don't want to hurt people when we make decisions. So then we're like, do you actually think this is going to happen? Like, will we hurt someone's feelings? Will, will they excommunicate us from the group? Like, all this <laughs> stuff. Um, and so we put a lot of pressure on that, and I don't think, like, going back, that's definitely something, like, we didn't need to do. Uh, and how did you like honor one another and just who you are as like image bearers in your friendship? Yeah, I think uh, one way that McKenna honored me uh, was she was always really respectful of like my pursuit of like going to church and like pursuing this calling that I felt like the Lord had placed on my life to go into ministry. Uh, there was never a conversation where she was like, this isn't what's right or like trying to like steer me away. She was always encouraging me of this path that I felt the Lord had placed me on. Uh, and so she would honor me by like the time that I had to spend doing homework, the time I had to spend working at the church. Like she would, she would like encourage me and be like, oh, I'm praying for you tonight. Like if I had to speak at the youth group I worked at up in California or down in California, she'd be like, hey, I'm praying for you. Uh, or like she would even want to come and support. And so like that meant the world to me to know that you wanted to honor me as just a friend. Um, and then I tried to honor her uh, in a lot of different ways. But like one is like respecting her time, right? Uh, and then two, like respecting some of her boundaries, like respecting like, the, like our friend group and like wanting to like, when I was with her, it's like, we're trying to get our friends to be together. And so like trying to make it a community instead of just a one-on-one -on -one time and like really guard, like take guard of like a relationship being one-on-one, -on -one, whereas like our friend group was like a whole group. And so uh, just that time with our friends, I really tried to, to honor her when we were both like behind closed doors and with our friends, uh, just by like uplifting her and respecting her. Yeah, so um, 
Josh does a lot to honor me. It's very great. He's great. Um, but it goes back to like what I was saying earlier about things that he does well. Um, during college, I hit two like major speed bumps in my life that like at the time I thought were like life changing and I thought like my whole world was gonna fall apart. Um, and Josh was like right there with me, like right when it happened. So um, like having him be there like when I needed to, him to be there was, and like him being consistent like in these seasons was so important and just, I like valued that so much to have him like walk alongside me during those. Um, but yeah, he was just like very intentional with like knowing what was going on in my life and how he could like help me. Um, honoring him, I've learned more and more that um, like one of my love languages is acts of service, but like little ones. Um, I remember in college, I would like randomly put cookies on his dorm bed just to be like, I'm thinking about you, I'm praying about you. Like, oh, you have a sermon, like here's cookies. Um, just, just like, um, but I'd also like what he was saying, like I really think it's so cool that he has this passion to like pursue like what the Lord has called him to do is like be a teacher and a leader. Um, and so like walking alongside him and like going to watch him preach at church that he was like interning at, but also like taking the time to like hear what he has to say. Um, I would go watch his tennis matches, though I don't love tennis. Um, <laughs> Um, he like performed at this one event. You have to, if you have time, ask Josh about WooFest. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, just like quality time for sure. Um, so next week we're going to move into the dating part and that's always really fun to start talking about. Um, so we really want you guys to come back, but before you guys head to your small groups, um, and discuss a lot of these things, you know, uh, one important thing in this time of singleness is that you kind of remember um, that if God has intentions for you to get married, you're gonna end up with one person, okay? So, uh, and you get to think about that one person romantically. And every other person of the opposite sex, you need to think about as a brother or a sister. And that really is the family of God. So if you can start a habit now of really in, like appreciating one another as family, like who you are, what your gifts are, picking up the different qualities that they have, seeing what you like in the opposite sex and their character and the way that they bear the image of God and kind of taking notes for the future and then even taking notes and taking stock of yourself and like what you're actually like. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not your job to like see if every single person of the opposite sex is the one for you. Like there's just one. And so getting in the habit of thinking differently, of thinking about people as friends first, um, instead of thinking of them as an opportunity or an option to see like, I don't know if you can get with them or how far you can get with them, right? Let's be honest. Um, and then really just trying to honor them and be friends is just a huge thing that we wanna like kind of end on. Um, so with that, will you pray? And then we're gonna go to small groups. I'd love to pray. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much uh, for your word and what it says about friendships and singleness. God, it's a gift uh, to be able to be in community with one another, uh, to experience singleness uh, in that season of life. Lord, I pray as these students break up into small groups, they'd be able to see how this message, how this panel applies to their lives how these discussion questions that they're gonna go over with their, with their small group leaders, uh, I, I pray that it would just be beneficial to them and they can see how it directly correlates to what they're going through in, in the season of their lives. God, I pray that you just bless small groups this evening, bless these students. Lord, we love you. It's in your name that we pray, amen. You guys are free to go ahead to small groups. <laughs>